Hello and welcome to Get Happy. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. My name is Debbie and I'm an actress and a singer from London, UK. My husband and I have been together for nearly 18 years. I know, I know, I don't look old enough. Thank you for saying that. He always calls me Pollyanna. Pollyanna was the heroine of my favourite storybook when I was growing up. And she was a child who could see the best in everything and her positive and sunny disposition affected the grumpy townsfolk around her and changed their lives for the better. Now, I know that sometimes my effervescently sunny disposition must drive my poor husband to distraction, but on balance I think I'd rather be positive Pollyanna than negative Nelly. So, in these videos, I hope to share with you the things that make me happy. Some of these things might be universal, but maybe you've forgotten and I can remind you. Some of these things might be personal to me, so hopefully you will find some happiness in them too. Now, before I carry on, I'd just like to explain that this is not a background on my laptop. No, it is a mural in my dining room. When we moved into our new flat mm, 10 years ago now, what I really wanted was a room that was paradise. So I looked on the internet and I found a company that did mural wallpaper. You choose your photograph, and they make it into panels for you and you can stick it up on the wall. So what I wanted in my photograph was water and foliage. This is actually a real plant, but there's lots of greenery in this photo. And I wanted some cliffs and I wanted a sort of Italian balcony effect and I wanted some flowers, you see down there. So I got my paradise. And I tell you something, during lockdown, this room was my absolute saviour. We don't have a garden as such. And so when we weren't allowed out at all, I used to come in here and sit at the other end of the dining table, opposite where I am now, and just look at this wall for hours on end. And I would imagine birds. And I would hear the waves lapping the shore. And I was no longer in lockdown. I was in paradise. This episode is going to be all about sunshine. I don't know anyone who doesn't like the sun. It is literally energy and life. It warms us. It warms the earth in which we grow the food that sustains us. It is the centre of the universe. Some cultures think of it as a deity. Now, I don't know if I believe in God, but I do believe in the power of nature and in the power of the universe. And I'm quite happy to think of the sun as some sort of deity warming us with their love. My husband and I like to do guided walks around London plenty of companies that do some really good walks on various themes and a couple of weeks ago we went on one about a quack doctor, a 
sort of fraudulent doctor who lived in the 1600s. His name was Lionel Lockyer and he put together some herbs and various bits and bobs that certainly couldn't harm but weren't the magical elixir that he claimed and he formed them into that sort of tablet but the interesting thing is that he used to put the pile of them on the table exactly in the spot where he knew the sun would come in through the window every day and that would fill this pile of tablets with sunlight so curative did he believe the sun to be and indeed in Victorian hospitals there used to be a whole ward called the solarium the sunroom where patients could go and get their curative healing sunlight I'm not sure if I have actual sad you know, seasonal affective disorder, but I suspect like many of you, I much prefer the sunshine to a rainy grey day. I'm going to do another video about rainy days. Let's stick with sunshine for now. I get so sad in the winter, for want of a better word, that I actually had to buy myself one of those sun lamps not the kind where you lie down and you get tan, I mean the UV lamp. You can get them on the internet. I think the cheapest one I've seen is £16. I'll show you. I've got actually my one shining here because it's night time at the moment and I wanted to have a bit of light on my face. So I'm going to turn this round. It's quite bright. See that? It's not very big and it really is lovely and bright and if I sit in front of that for a little 20 minutes or so it does make me feel as though I've had my sunlight for the day. I also take lots of vitamin D and I have to tell you that since I started taking the maximum dosage that also makes a big difference to my mood and my well-being. Check with your doctor first but I do recommend Take vitamin D if you can. So there's lots of things you can do to bring sunshine into your lives. I always try to have yellow flowers in my flat. Look, look at this beautiful yellow rose here. Isn't that stunning? And you see a beautiful perfect. Smells lovely too. And what I do is I have a bowl of yellow flowers and I call it my bowl of sunshine. <laughs> my favourite flowers are actually daffodils. I think sadly we're too late for daffodils now. I've not seen any in the shops for a couple of days now. Daffodils always mean that spring is coming at last after a long, cold, grey winter. Now in our bedroom, our curtains are quite thin, but I like that because when I open my eyes, I can tell whether it's going to be a sunny day or a grey day. And today, I open my eyes and the sun streaming through those curtains and I knew it was going to be a great day. I went for a swim today. I do like to exercise regularly and I'll do another video about that but I have not been for a swim for a few years now since before Covid in fact. We used to have a swimming pool right round the corner, literally a 30 second walk away. However, sadly, during the pandemic, the swimming pool closed.
toes down and hasn't reopened. So again, I went on the internet. What did we do before the internet? And I found a local pool about 10 minutes away. It's a council run pool, very nice. And it has a glass roof. So the sunlight was shining on the water and made it sparkle. Oh, it was delightful. Warm water in the sunshine. What could be better? And just the sound of my breath as I went under the water. Calm and steady. Oh. Breathe in. Sound of the roar of the crowd when the pool is drowned out. Some of you I know will be thinking, oh, I can't go swimming. I don't look good in my swimming costume. I have the same fears. But you know what? Everyone else is thinking the same thing too. They're far too busy worrying about what they look like in their swimming costume to worry about you. So my advice is just get out there and go for a swim one day. So when I'd finished my swim, I came home and I got changed and I went to my day job today, which was busking. Those of you who live maybe in America, if you don't have the word busking, it's basically street performing. During COVID, a lot of things have changed during COVID, haven't they? Well, as an actress, I was very worried about my career, what would happen because the theatres were shut, film production companies weren't working anymore, and I was worried that acting would never happen for me again. I don't have any other skills. I wish I did. In fact, I wish I'd listened to my late mother when she kept saying to me, you must get a proper profession and not silly acting. Now, I do love acting, but I do wish I had another skill to fall back on. Sorry, Mum. The only thing I can do is sing. I haven't sung for years, and I mean years, maybe 20 or so. I had terrible stage fright for singing, not for acting, just for singing. It all started with a gig that went slightly wrong. I used to sing all the time in bars and clubs and pubs. I'm a jazz singer and I loved it. But then I had a gig where I wasn't feeling well. I had a bit of a sore throat and I should have called the gig off and said, I'm sorry, I'm ill can't do it. But positive Pollyanna thought she could struggle through. In this case, she was wrong. The gig went terribly. I coughed and spluttered my way through it. And I was so embarrassed by the whole thing. It sort of put me off singing. And I didn't sing again for many, many years. So during lockdown, this thought came to me. Oh yes, I used to sing. I'll do that. So I bought myself a speaker with some microphones and some backing tracks. The second we were allowed out, I went out on the streets and I started singing in public. And I love it. Singing makes me very, very happy indeed. I sing jazz songs sort of songs that I grew up with. People like Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Frank Sinatra, Michael Bublé now does all of those songs. Those are the songs that I love to sing. And you know what? People love to hear them. When I start singing, it makes people happy. I only do happy songs. I don't like the sad ones. Life's got enough of those. And in fact, a couple of the songs I sing have got the sun in them. Songs like, um, 
grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. And here's another one that you might know. Here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. That was, of course, the Beatles. I've listened to a jazzy version. And people love live music. And I watch them coming from afar with sort of grumpy, miserable faces. And they hear music and they start to listen and they start to smile. And sometimes they dance along, sometimes they sing along, but always they look at me and they smile. And that makes me so pleased that I've brightened someone's day. So after my busking, my singing, there's a little food market in the square where I sing and um, I go to my favourite stall and today I had Forbes Delicious honey roast parsnip and beetroot pie and as I was just about to pay a very lovely young man came up and said wait wait I so enjoyed your singing let me buy you your lunch how very lovely of him so free lunch another lovely thing that happened today when I got on the tube, the underground train home, another lovely thing was that this massive dog came onto the tube. He was enormous, more like a horse than a dog, but a very unusual breed. I don't know what he was, but he was beautiful, a sort of beige, sandy colour, and these very pale blue eyes. It was quite extraordinary. And I don't know about you, but when a dog comes onto a tube, people start smiling. They look at the dog and they look around to see other people's reactions. And I love that connection. I don't think, especially in London, we look at each other enough. We don't acknowledge each other enough. People push and shove past each other all the time. And actually, what I like do is smile at people and hope that they smile back. Up in the north of England, people are much friendlier. You know, you pass in the street and you say, hello, even if you don't know them. That's a lovely thing to do. I wish we did that in London. Let's start a campaign. Wherever you are, the next time you go out and about, say hello to the people you pass. You never know, you might make their day certainly makes mine when that happens. After I went busking and after I came home and saw the dog on the tube, my next step was to go to the theatre. Oh, I went to see a musical that a friend of mine was the lighting designer for and it was called Betty Blue Eyes. It's a wonderful musical, I don't know it at all about, um, it's actually based on a film called The Private Function with Michael Palin, you may remember it, and it's set in wartime Britain and concerns an illegal pig called Betty Blue Eyes. It was such a fantastic production in a tiny little fringe theatre called the Unique Theatre. 18 people in the cast in this tiny theatre. I don't know how they all got on the stage, but they sang and they danced and they were having the time of their lives. And so were we. That's another thing that makes me happy is going to the theatre. Do you go? If not, why not? Go to the theatre. It's the best thing. You'll be transported to another place. I can't recommend it enough. So that was my day. How's your day been? I hope it was good. Before I go, would you like to hear a story? 
This one is called The Raven and the Sun, and it's a Native American folk tale that I found on a website called storytellingforeveryone.net. So thank you to them. I'm going to read it to you now. The evil wizard Tupilak had a pair of magic shoes that allowed him to move a great distance in one single step. These shoes allowed him to walk up to the sky to cut a hole in it. He moved his wife into that hole so they could have privacy. His wife disliked their new home in the sky because she had no neighbours, so he gave her a child to care for. Still, she was unhappy because there was no light and it was always cold. So, Tupilak returned to this side of the sky, where he captured the sun and the moon, tied them into bags, and knotted them with strong string. I think that's quite nice to say. Strong string. Oh, I like that. I do like words. I'm going to do another video about words, but let's carry on with this. At first, this darkness suited the raven. Liked to nap. Eventually, the lack of the light made the people of Earth weak, for no food would grow in the darkness. The people came to Raven and beseeched his assistance. Once he understood what was happening, he knew it was the work of his old foe, Tupilak. Raven took to wing, soaring across the dark freezing sky until he found the hole in the sky that Tupilak had gone through. The sun was blazing bright on the other side of the sky. Raven found Tupilak enjoying the heat and called him out. Tupilak laughed at the trickster, saying it took one thief to find another. The old wizard refused to give the sun over and told the raven to return to the darkness. Raven watched Tupilak's little world until one day he saw Tupilak's daughter out walking. Knowing what he must do to gain access to Tupilak's home, he balled up his raven cloak and turned himself into a feather casting himself into the stream where she drew forth her drinking water. Sometime later, she gave birth to a strong baby boy who was, of course, the raven himself. His grandparents and his mother doted on the child, refusing him nothing except the bags that contained the sun and the moon. Every time he reached for one of these bags, which hung from the rafters, he was denied. Eventually, the baby would not take no for an answer. Finally, Tupilak's daughter talked her own mother into letting the baby play with the bags. So, when Tupilak went out, the baby's mother brought down the bag containing the moon gave it over for her son to play with. Mother and daughter enjoyed the sweet silence of the contented child, but the minute their attention was withdrawn, the raven released the moon, which bumped along the sky until it found Tupilak's hole and then escaped back into the world. Tupilak returned, for he had seen the moon escape. He was angry, but the baby greeted him with such happiness and Tupilak was unable to stay cross for long. Raven waited until Tupilak was snoring in sleep before he demanded the bag containing the sun. The women were not careless this time. They double knotted the bag before handing it over. The raven was unable to open it with his uncoordinated little baby hands. It was time to steal away 
gather up his raven feather cloak, and return to his true form. He escaped through the hole in the sky where the humans had started to get used to being in the light of the moon once more. Now they rejoiced in the light of the sun. They say Tupelac re-emerges occasionally and steals the sun back. But Raven is always successful in its return. There's a lovely quotation that I always think of, which is, turn your face to the sun and the shadows fall behind you. Isn't that lovely? I'll say it again. Turn your face to the sun and the shadows fall behind you. Perhaps you feel that there has been no sun in your life for a little while. I'd like to do a little exercise with you if I may. Here, just at the top of your belly under your chest, is your solar plexus. It's basically a mass of nerves that radiate out from a little ball into all the different parts of your body and it looks like the sun with the rays stretching out. That's why it's called the solar plexus. I want you to shut your eyes, take a deep breath, put your hands on your solar plexus and imagine the heat and the warmth inside, just radiating out. I want you to imagine those rays radiating down your legs, down. rays coming out from your center and going around the back of you and warming your back and imagine those rays going up your chest and into your shoulders down your arms and into your fingers warming filling your body with the sunshine and I want you to imagine those hot, hot rays of sunshine going up your chest and into your throat and your chin and into your lips so that all the things you speak will be sunshine and warming your cheeks and your nose brightening behind your eyes. Imagine your face turned to the sun, your forehead, your whole head bathed in sunshine. And stretch out your legs and your arms, raise your head and your face to the sun and feel that warmth. And that love spreading through you. And remember, every sunset is a chance to lay the day to rest, whether it's been good or not so much. And every sunrise is an opportunity to start again to turn the page and welcome a bright new day. If you enjoyed this video, why not like and subscribe and share if you can. And I hope to be back with you soon with another way to get happy.